Welcome to my presentation. The opposite of stress is not relaxation, it is the strengthening of the ventral vagus nerve. Now the question is, what does uh, this, this sentence by Stephen Porges mean and what does it have to do with wing wave? This was a question that has been fascinating me for the last year and I hope that I can bring a little bit of this fascination uh, to you here today. So this is uh, the agenda for today's presentation. The basics, our nervous systems, what is the polyvagal theory by Stephen Porges, what's the interplay of the nervous systems What's the polyvagal circle? What is neuroception? It's a new key term coined by Stephen Porges. And how can we apply the polyvagal theory in our practice? Eventually I will show you some polyvagal exercises developed by Stanley Rosenberg to strengthen the ventral vagus nerve. And last but not least show you the connections uh, to wing wave. So the basis of our nervous system, our nervous system consists of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. On the central nervous system we have the brain and the brain stem. On the other side we have the vegetative nervous system and the somatic nervous system. One is an involuntary, the other one a voluntary arbitrary system. Then within the vegetative system we have the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, we have the spiral nerves from the, uh, from the brain stem. In brief, we have the sympathetic nerve on the left side, the parasympathetic on the right side, and we could uh, liken it uh, we could say the sympathetic nerve is the accelerator pedal and the parasympathetic nerve is the brake pedal in our nervous system. That was for a long time state of the art in science. So we have these two antagonists uh, who uh, more or less balance each other out. Now Porges uh, added something more, uh, more precise, something more applicable, specifically to humans in today's world. So we see how the sympathetic nerve and the parasympathetic nerve are connected to the organs in the body. Now we see again the, br the accelerator pedal on the left, the brake pedal on the right. We see how they work in balance, in widening, constricting the pupils, widening, constricting the bronchi. And uh, as long there is no danger, we, we are in a state of immobilization, rest or recovery. Now when we look at our ancestors, 
in case of danger, uh, the sympathetic, sympathetic nerve was the uh, triggered mobilization, action, flight or fight. So it triggered stress, adrenaline, noradrenaline. And in, in a state of no danger, the parasympathetic kicked in, the brake pedal, there was immobilization, there was quiet, quietness, calm, relaxation. Now this used to be an automatic swing back, but we notice specifically with modern people, this automatic swing back from stress to relaxation is not always working. This means that something is missing in the sympathetic and parasympathetic model. Something is missing. And what is this? Now, Stephen Porges, he developed his polyvagal theory and he found an explanation for this fact when he examined the vagus nerve which is the biggest nerve of our parasympathetic system in great detail. So the vagus is the largest nerve of the parasympathetic system and is involved in the regulation of almost all internal organs. So Porges discovered that the vagus nerve is not a single nerve, but it is divided into two parts, a dorsal branch and the ventral branch, which fulfill very different functions. The ventral vagus evolves in the process of evolution in mammals to enable a new behavioral strategy, which we call social engagement, the so-called social engagement system. So the social engagement, for example, shows in the coherence of a group of mammals. family or a pack. And in modern life this could be a company, this could be a company department, a group of colleagues, a group of friends. So the ventral vagus is, so to speak, the latest development in humans. And here we can see the both branches, the dorsal in red, the ventral in green, the sympathetic in yellow. The diaphragm is almost like a watershed. Everything that is above is very much regulated by the ventral vagus. And you can see that the ventral vagus uh, has a lot of branches into the head, into the face. And this helps us to give and to receive signals in a group or in a family. So the autonomous nervous system, as defined by Stephen Porges, uh, consists of the sympathetic nerve, the ventral vagus nerve, the green in the middle, and the dorsal vagus, 
the red on the right. And they are not antagonists, they can be active at the same time. So the sympathetic danger, arousal, mobilization, readiness to action, increased energy, curiosity, fear, The sympath sympathetic nervous ner nerve is needed simply if we want to get out of bed or get up from our sofa. And we see when the arousal gets too much, then even in a sympathetic state, we can go into a depression. And when we return into the state of safety, this is when we get calmer, there is contact, there is communication, there is sociability, there is fun, there is closeness, there is games, uh, there is contempt, it's trust, it's just a, just a state of well-being. Now, when we go into the right side state, the dorsal vergus state, this is threat to life in the event of overpowering external force or imminent annihilation and that causes immobilization, shock, rigidity, shutdown, everything that helps us to survive. And let's be clear, the dorsal vagus is essential to our survival because these life-threatening situations are there and we need to be ready to react, we need to shut down to a certain level to save energy, to get ready for whatever we have to deal with. But shock, rigidity and shutdown are very normal reactions in these situations. So there is fear, there is helplessness, there is probably hopelessness, there is apathy and withdrawal. But these three neural circuits regulate our behavioral and physiological adaptation to dangerous, safe or life-threatening environments. The sympathetic nerve um, makes reaction in, in case of danger, possible fight flight, the ventral vagus in situation of safety, rest, digest, health and the dorsal vagus when there is threat of life, faint, freeze. But to heal in safety it's only possible in the middle, in the central, in the green uh, area of the ventral vagus. So imagine you are constantly in the yellow zone, in the sympathetic zone. Uh, over a long period we will all get ill, we will suffer uh, horrendous symptoms. A 
So it's a very flexible model that Porg has developed here. And again, the th these three neur neur neural circuits regulate our behavioral systems in balance. They are always active and they are not antagonists, they are always working together. So we are, we are blessed that we have these three systems that help us to balance the different states out. And uh, uh, just to show you in an example, this is, uh, this is the, one of the benefits of the dorsal vagus. It's the, um, it's the uh, withdraw, it's the complete faint and freeze. See what the duck does when the dog takes the attention away. Just suddenly wakes up, springs up, runs for his life. This is one of the benefits of the dorsal vagus, pretending to be dead. So the predator loses interest to pursue the prey. Now knowing all this, how can we use this? So what's the interplay of the three nervous systems and how do they work in a, in a, in a circuit? Now here you see the polyvagal circle, so you see the yellow zone, the sympathetic zone, the state of arousal, you see the red one, the dorsal vagus, the immobilization, you see the green one, the ventral vagus, social interaction, and you see the, uh, the, the, the border zones. If you want to do an activity, even just to play a game, you need to go into the sympathetic state, into the yellow zone. You need to get into a certain level of arousal. And when the competition is finished, then you get back into the green zone into the social interaction. So this is what sometimes happens with modern people. So they just, they remain stuck in, in the deep in the yellow zone in the flight area on the borderline to the red zone, to the immobilization, and it takes an immense energy to get out of this state. And the danger is, in the, in the red zone, to completely shut down. This is when the system doesn't want to have anything to do at all with the outside world. If you see the dotted line in the in the middle of the red zone, this is the this is the area where we can help as coaches people by um, suitable interventions to get out of this state of immobilization and complete freeze back into the 
ventral vagus state of social interaction. And you see between um, ventral vagus and uh, sympathetic, there is the area of game. It's, you know, this is just competition, this is game. Um, when you see the border zone of immobilization and social interaction, this is tending and caring, this is herding and brooding, this is where you are completely at peace with yourself. And the most lovely metaphor is the mother nursing her baby at her breast. It's immobilization, it's safety, free from any threat, and it's social connection in its deepest and cleanest form. At the bottom, on the border zone between the red and the yellow, this is the most dangerous state, which we might call a bipolar adaptation. It's over under reaction and it shows all symptoms of an autistic form cycle being shut away from the outside world, being shut off from any social interaction. So this polyvagal circle is a very um, interesting and uh, enlightening uh, metaphor created by Stephen Porges. Now Stephen Porges gave us another uh, key term, the neuroception. So now let's see what Stephen Porges means with neuroception. So neuroception is a process with which our autonomous nervous system assesses the situations around us and within us with regard to danger and safety, regardless of consciousness. Most of the time we don't even notice what's happening because it's an autonomous system and it happens without our conscious knowing. So sometimes we just feel something. So we, we, we can use this uh, uh, metaphor of a, of a of a battleship, of a fregat, and you see the uh, neuroception in a ship to defend against and avoid dangers. You see the radar, you see other detection systems. And this is basically what the neuroception in our brain or in our whole autonomous nervous system does for us. Scanning the world around us or even inside us for any source of danger and preparing us for action. And depending on the signals that the, that the ship gets, it can react with, uh, with uh, flight or fight. In the old days, with our ancestors, this is what neuroceptions looked like. So we see the danger, the real danger, and we have our surviving strategies, fight, flight, faint or freeze. Also in diesem Fall hätte ich mich wahrscheinlich, wenn 
unser Vorfahrt wäre, hätte ich ähm, das erste Beide wäre ihm wahrscheinlich möglich, also steht ja wahrscheinlich auch das mit ihm. Ja, in der Hoffnung, dass der Säbelzahntiger von mir ablässt. Ja, weiß man natürlich auch nicht genau. Ja. Heutzutage sieht das so aus. Ja. So nowadays, the reception looks different. Nowadays the danger is not coming from a saber to a tiger. Nowadays the danger is probably coming in work situations from an aggressive boss, for example. And then our new reception gives us an indication what's happening. And then we have different options to react. We we can fight, we can faint, we can freeze, we probably might be run, run away, but running away is not so easy in nowadays world, business world. So we are left with fight, faint or freeze. Uh, you may recognize um, people, uh, for example, in your, in your work environments, people who are always fighting their environment. They're always in a fighting mode. And specifically in our in in this these days in 2020 2021 we we are in a situation that we have to keep uh, social distancing we have masks on uh, we are not allowed to have contact we are not enjoying the closeness of having enjoying cultural events together so that even puts more pressure on our new reception and our survival strategies. And beyond that, what's happening with my job? Uh, is my job still safe? Um, Will I be in Ferno for a long time? Will my company survive? Uh, what's about money? How will my relationship, my, my family situation survive lockdown? And, and for a great po uh, um, portion of our population, um, the, the shutdown and uh, the apathy uh, has become a sort of a new normality. So let's, let's just summarize the polyvagal theory. So we have an autonomous nervous system that ensures the survival of the body. We have three functional systems, the sympathetic energy for fight or flight. We have the so-called old vagus immobilization in case of life distress. We have the new vagus social interaction, we have new reception that regulates our reaction. So, but there are two problems, because new reception is autonomous, so it can be wrong. And problem number two is, switching back and forth at lightning speed sometimes gets stuck. Das Problem 1. Die Neurozeption, so toll sie ist, ja, kann sich irren. 
Und in zwei ist dieses nichts schneller hin und her schalten. Denn die hart, das hart häufig. Das bleibt sogar manchmal stecken. So, das, das sind die beiden Probleme. Und was machen wir jetzt damit? So we have these two problems, but are we not, what are we going to do about them? So there is another person that I would like to mention here. This is Stanley Rosenberg. Stanley Rosenberg found something uh, very genius. So he found how we can indirectly influence neuroception and how we can strengthen the ventral vagus and that means at the same time reduce the strong influence of the two other nerve, uh, ner nerves or nervous systems. So getting people again into the zone of contact, communication and sociability. And give them the opportunity to evaluate the uh, events around us from a different perspective. So we have a possibility, sort of a, of a, of a not a shortcut, a, um, a detour that can help us to influence neuroception and to help people to get back into a state of, of healing. Now have a look at these. These are uh, bicycle gear shifts. We know them all. And of course, these these bicycle gear shifts help us to uh, uh, to cope with different um, uh, situations on the road that we are cycling, uphill, downhill, etc., etc. Now, when you, when you look in detail, I don't believe that the upper one, the upper uh, gear shift, will help you, will be very much of help to adapt to different uh, uh, cycling conditions. But when you look at the bottom, well oiled, uh, that looks more likely. Uh, to help you because it can switch from uh, from one wheel to the other one uh, apparently very swiftly and uh, in a very fluid way. So this means we need to train our autonomous nervous system with so-called polyvagal exercises as developed by Stanley Rosenberg, uh, but do this in um, in exchange or do do it with sympathetic vagus nerve exercises. So it's like switch falls back, switch falls back. It's like hot cold shower. Take a hot shower, a cold shower, and help uh, our body to regulate better. So this is my recommendation that I would like to give you um, and uh, I would be glad when you take this as one takeaway from my presentation. So finally, I would like to show you 
polyvagal exercises by Stanley Rosenberg for strengthening the ventral vagus nerve. Just briefly, um, what Stanley Rosenberg says is the autonomic nervous system is an essential part of the human nervous system and it controls and monitors the activities of the internal organs. And problems in these organs can be the result of a dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system. Problems arise when we can no longer get out of a stressful state, even after the threat or danger has passed. So Rosenberg says, stress has been a health problem for many decades and a tremendous amount of research has been devoted to understanding the harmful effects of long-term stress. Perhaps the problem is that we are still on the wrong plan. Due to the antiquated understanding of the autonomic nervous system, we have not yet been able to find the real effective methods of coping with stress. And this is what has been fascinating me now for more than one year. Now, now you see a one, a one exercise, a basic exercise number one. If you like, you can take a screenshot. Just fold your, your hands behind your head, make a kind of a cradle for your head. Keep your side straight and only move your eyes to the right, to your right elbow, for instance. And do it for around about one minute. And you might find a reaction where you feel an urge to take a deep breath or sometimes even a yawn. and do it for 60 seconds to one side and do it for around about 60 seconds or until you feel the deep breathing urge or yawn so do it on the other side 60 seconds on the right 60 seconds on the left And I do, do recommend, do it four times a day. Sometimes I, I can't get into sleep easily, so I do the exercise and sometimes it helps and I sleep much better. Also, when you wake up from a bad dream, the autonomous nervous system doesn't distinguish between a real threatening experience and, and a nightmare. There is another exercise when you turn your eyes to one side and tilt your head into the same direction downwards to your shoulder. 
just till the head. Make sure you're not pulling up your shoulder, just tilt the head downwards. Do it to one side, do it to the other side, each way for round about 60 seconds. And when you've done the exercise, please send me an email, let me know how your experience has been. Now this is just a, a, a very quick one. What is the connection of, uh, what's, the, what's the evidence or what's the connection between uh, the polyvagal theory and wing wave? Now we know the structure of our brain, our cerebrum, our limbic system, uh, basically limbic system, very much the area um, of interest for wing wave coaching. And you see just below the limbic system our brain stem, this is where our cranial nerves uh, come through. This is also a connection to the parasympathetic system with the ventral and the dorsal vagus. So last but not least, I would like to give you this message. Gain a better quality of life despite stress. Calm your new reception through regular polyvagal exercises. And disempower negative imprints in your amygdala through wing wave coaching. So I'm planning to do a uh, an intensive seminar in autumn of this year, specifically on the subject of polyvagal theory and polyvagal exercises. So this is what I wanted to give you in this presentation. So there are two questions from the audience. I, I will answer these questions uh, in writing. And if you want to contact me, just use my email address uh, wrs at ske-schmidt.de. And thanks to my translator, I think I put you a little bit under stress. Don't worry, Wolfgang. And a big thank you to the whole team of Wingwave and the Besser Siegmund Institute for helping me to prepare this presentation. And have a lovely day. Thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.